Well, the glaciers are the natural phenomenon which can be observed by everybody, which gives the clearest signal of climate change. Glaciers have been retreating for more than 100 years worldwide, with very few exceptions. And in um, global climate observing uh, systems, they are often called unique demonstration objects of climate change. And this has two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that everybody can see the change, especially today with the modern satellite images, which are, are available to everybody in uh, Google Earth, for instance. And secondly, because everybody can understand, or most people on Earth can understand, that ice melts when it gets warmer. The glaciers in the high mountains go back very quickly, and uh, this is the same in Peru. And it has several effects. I would say one is uh, a hazard aspect um, connected um, with the new lakes which form, which are beautiful, attractive, but also can be very dangerous, can cause uh, catastrophes. Um, a second problem is the water supply problem, especially for agriculture, irrigation at lower altitudes, so far from the mountains. And the third aspect is the landscape diversity and the attraction for tourists. Um, if you look at the tourist propaganda, you know, uh, then you see peaks like Huascaran, which, which are an attraction with their white snow and ice. And uh, this is also an important point. And both problems uh, relate to Switzerland and to Peru. So the two countries can learn from each other, help each other. This is the main reason why we have this Glaciaris uh, project with Caria and Kosude. Well, the high mountains uh, have been in, in traditionally an agricultural type of uh, landscape, and this is now dramatically changing in, in many regions of the world. Like, for instance, in the Swiss Alps, uh, the population is no longer really an agricultural population, but it lives in cities in the mountains. Like, for instance, the rapid growing of uh, Uaras. And uh, these people, of course, they are exposed to the dangers. Huaras has been destroyed very heavily. Thousands of people killed in 1941 by the outburst of Palcacocha Lake. So they are exposed to the dangers, but they also depend on the water from the glaciers during the dry season for uh, doing their um, irrigation agriculture during an entire year, which would not be possible without the glaciers. Yeah, well, Today it is very clear that two things are needed. One is adaptation to the development which is unavoidable. For instance, the lakes in the high mountains, they already exist or they will form in the near future. So we have to deal with this problem, right? What do we do with these new landscapes? And the second thing is that we have to do what is called mitigation. This means that slow down the rapid development, the global warming is very rapid. And the, uh, if, if it is too rapid, our possibilities to adapt will be reduced. So if we really want to adapt to climate change, we have to slow down the, the development. And we, we should be aware of the fact that if, if we start slowing down, it's like a car which is driving fast. You know, it cannot stop immediately, but we can slow it down so that we can react uh, to, let's say, traffic problems or so. But if we are too fast, we cannot react. So this is the same principally, the same situation. I receive uh, many mails, you know, from people who are climate skeptics. And, um, well, th there are different aspects to the whole thing. But the main thing is there is no certainty about climate change. We have to live with the uncertainty for the future. This means that even the very best models cannot explain everything. Science is limited and the, the climate system is so complex, we, we cannot really foresee everything. So there remains an uncertainty. But you know, it's, it's very simple. If uh, the probability is, exists that we have a rapid climate change in the 21st century, then we have to do something about it, absolutely. We cannot just uh, close our eyes. And from all the science I know, IPCC, for instance, the last report is extremely ex extensive and it confirms earlier reports. 
it is very clear that the probability that we have a very dangerous development is much, much higher than the probability that this will not happen. Uh, the main point would be to have the big nations included, especially the USA, which are still the primary producer of greenhouse gases per person, right? But also the developing countries. So I think um, a very optimistic view would be to include all nations. China, Japan, the United States, and not just uh, the European Union and a few other countries. So this would already be a, a big, big step.